Hello. Today we're going to watch water boil. There's nothing more exciting than watching water boil. I have some kind of warm water. I'm going to put it on this hot plate and we'll see what happens. Now, um, water, like other liquids, has a vapor pressure and the vapor pressure increases with temperature. And although it's easy to see liquid water, it's pretty hard to see water vapor, but if the water vapor had color, you would see a lot of uh, vapors coming off here. You can kind of see them. Now this hot plate is very hot, where the hot plate is interfacing with the glass uh, container. So it's going to be very hot at the bottom of this uh, water solution. Water, it's not a solution, it's pure water. And uh, of course it won't be as hot at the top. It, I started out with hot water that had previously been boiled. So all the air has been removed from it. If you take uh, water from the spigot, even hot water, uh, you'll see a lot of air bubbles come off first. But uh, most of those air bubbles have been boiled away. Maybe that's not the proper term, but uh, the solubility of gases in water decreases with temperature, increases, uh, decreases with increasing temperature. And so, since this has already been boiled, most of that air has been um, eliminated. And uh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, I can see striations in the water because the water is not at a homogeneous temperature. It's hotter at the bottom and cooler at the top because it's being heated from the bottom. And so you see uh, striations due to the uh, fact that the refractive index depends on temperature. And I can see those striations seem to be moving up. So the, the hot uh, water, of course, because of uh, uh, hot water is less dense than cold water. It uh, it moves up, and uh, but still, uh, because you're heating from the bottom, you're you're going to have hotter water right at the interface of the, the hot plate and the and the glass bottom. Uh, I hear a little cracking sound, and that's uh, little bubbles forming. All right, the water at the bottom is close to 100 degrees Celsius, and that's the temperature at which the vapor pressure of water equals one atmosphere, which is the external pressure. And so bubbles form. I think you may be able to see them starting to form. Every once in a while you see a, a, a bubble go all the way up. That's an air bubble. But you see little bubbles forming, but then quickly collapsing. And that's because uh, the the temperature at the bottom is uh, it might be 100 degrees and a, a vapor, the water vapor has a pressure of one atmosphere. It's able to support itself. But as it rises, the temperature drops and the, uh, the vapor pressure drops and it collapses. So we're going to see this forming of bubbles, but they don't get very far. Now it's easier for me to see them than probably you because uh, my eyes are better than my video camera. But I can see little bubbles and I hear cracking sounds. I see the striations moving up. Now again, I started with uh, water that had previously been boiled, and I, I started it out hot. I didn't start it at room temperature. Okay, I'm seeing more of these bubbles forming and collapsing. I hope you can see them. They don't get very far. They don't get all the way up. <clears throat> but as time goes on, the temperature of this uh, water is going to get hotter and hotter and uh, eventually even at the top up here it'll be at 100 degrees Celsius and so the 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 vapor pressure will be one atmosphere in the bubbles and it will be able to rise all the way to the top and we'll notice something interesting also of course the pressure at the bottom is a little higher than the pressure at the top due to the, the, the pressure exerted by the water itself, the hydrostatic pressure. So we'll notice once this really starts going that as the bubbles form, 
and it's hot enough for them to be supported all the way to the top, they'll actually get a little bit bigger because <laughs> the pressure is decreasing. The hydrostatic pressure is decreasing as you go up. Okay, now we're starting to see more bubbles. We see some little, little bubbles that must be air bubbles that are going all the way up, but we're seeing these big bubbles forming at the bottom and they're getting a little further than they did before. Some of them are making it about halfway up. There's a term called a rolling boil, and that's when the bubbles really can roll all the way, you can go all the way to the top, and you get a vigorous boiling. Okay, we're getting closer and closer to boiling. If you put a temperature probe in there, you would see that it's hotter at the bottom than at the top because the heat is coming from the bottom. But it is uh, circulating. Okay, the bubbles are getting further up, as you can see. But they're not making it quite to the top, most of them. And I think you can see that the bubbles get bigger, but then they collapse. So there's two effects here. The, the bubbles uh, are filled with water vapor at a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, one atmosphere, approximately, anyway. Uh, they're getting higher and higher. Okay, some of them are making it close to the top. Now, now we see some bubbles and they're actually, some of them seem to be growing actually, but they're still not quite making, most of them making it to the top. The temperature has to be high enough at the top so that the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, otherwise they'll collapse. Now some people confuse evaporation with boiling. Water always evaporates, it's evaporating right from the start, but boiling occurs when the vapor pressure of the water equals the external pressure. At the top of a mountain, boiling would occur at a lower temperature because the external pressure is less than one atmosphere, one standard atmosphere. Whereas if you have a high pressure, like in a pressure cooker, uh, the, the temperature of boiling would be greater than 100 degrees Celsius. All right, now, now we see the, the bubbles ma mainly getting into the top. All right, we're, we're close to a, a, um, a rolling boil. And you can see that the top surface here is is uh, moving around as the bubbles come to the surface and then uh, go into the atmosphere. So now uh, the temperature is pretty much un uniformly at 100 degrees. Uh, and um, as the bubbles form from the bottom, because it's hotter there, and <clears throat> the um, bubbles are bubbles of not air, but water vapor, at a pressure, which is the standard vapor pressure of water at 100 degrees, 760 millimeters of mercury, one atmosphere. Um, and they are able to get all the way to the top because the temperature uh, does not, uh, it, it is at 100 at the top. It may be a little bit hotter right at the interface there, but but you could also see, if you look carefully, that the bubbles, they start out small and they get bigger. And that's because the pressure is a little bit greater down here due to hydrostatic effect of the water, liquid water, than it is up here. So they, the pressure decreases as you go up a little bit and, and the, the bubbles get bigger. So uh, I think uh, watching water boil is uh, not such a boring thing. I think it's kind of an exciting thing. Now if I take it off, it quickly stops boiling, okay, 
and then put it back on and it resumes the boiling. Okay, well, uh, I thank you for your attention. I hope you find this uh, useful. Um, it's something you can uh, look at on your own. Um, watch, put a pan of water on the stove. Be careful. The water gives off a lot of energy, gaseous water, when it condenses. So uh, be very careful. All right, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.